Stunning verdict comes down in the Kate Steinle murder trial. Jose Inez Garcia Zarate acquitted of murder and manslaughter, the most serious charges he was facing. Now, the jury's decision announced just minutes ago. Here is the breakdown of the verdict. Garcia Zarate not guilty of first or second degree murder. He was acquitted on the lesser charge of manslaughter as well. The only conviction in this case, jurors found him guilty of felony possession of a firearm. It was a major defeat for the prosecution. Prosecution failed to convince jurors that Garcia Zarate deliberately targeted Steinle. Jurors siding with the defense who had argued the shooting was a complete accident. 32-year-old Kate Steinle shot in July of 2015. She was taking an evening stroll with her dad on San Francisco's Pier 14. The gun used was stolen from a car belonging to an agent for the U.S. Bureau of Land Management. And we have a series of reports on the verdict. Let's go live to KPIX 5 reporter Andrea Borba, who was inside the courtroom for the jury's decision. Andrea? Well, it was really a stunning verdict. There was a lot of surprise in the courtroom over what this jury came back with this afternoon in the Zarate case. After the verdicts were finally read, all of them, Zarate hugged his uh, attorney, Matt Gonzalez, with the public defender's office. Now, we have learned in the short amount of time since this case has let out that the uh that Mr. Zarate will face 16 months to three years on a felony in possession of a firearm charge, but time served counts in this case. After the courtroom let out, Mr. Gonzalez went in front of the cameras and had this to say. Uh, this jury's verdict should be respected. They heard the evidence. They deliberated as a group. They heard readback testimony. They looked at the physical evidence and they rendered a verdict uh, to the best of their abilities in accordance with the law. Uh, I want to thank the public defender of San Francisco, Jeff Adachi, who has given us support throughout the trial. He's given us uh, good advice, and we're very grateful for his assistance and help and support. Um, for those who might criticize this verdict, there are a number of people that have commented on this case in the last couple of years. The Attorney General of the United States, the President and Vice President of the United States. Let me just remind them that they are themselves under investigation uh, by a special prosecutor in Washington, D.C., and they may themselves soon avail themselves of the presumption of innocence and the beyond a reasonable doubt standard. And so I would ask them to reflect on that before they comment or disparage the result in this case. Now, to reiterate here, Mr. Zarate was not found guilty of first-degree murder, second-degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, or being in possession of a semi-automatic weapon. He was only found to be a felon, guilty to be a felon in possession of a firearm. We have learned just in the past few minutes that there is, in fact, a federal ICE warrant out for Mr. Zarate in this case right now. It is unclear when exactly the sentencing will happen or when he might be turned over to federal authorities. Ken? Yeah, so it's a good distinction. He faces federal charges as well. Um, I want to know about the emotion inside that courtroom, and I'm assuming there were some Steinle family members inside when that verdict was read. Can you tell us, were they absolutely shocked? It was stunned silence in there, Ken. It was absolute stunned silence. Nobody was anticipating that this would be the outcome, that it would only be a guilty on the felony in possession of a firearm, which has a very low standard of proof for a jury to come back with a guilty verdict. All right, Andrea Borba, thanks for uh, your live work there at uh, the courthouse. We want to switch right now to our KPIX 5 legal analyst, Melissa Kane, who joins us now. And Melissa, um, it is a bit of a surprise. Uh, we talked about it before the jury came back, and we were looking at the possibility of a second-degree murder charge, but they didn't even get that.
I mean, it just goes to show you that beyond a reasonable doubt is a really high standard. Look, it's common knowledge that in San Francisco, getting a guilty verdict is incredibly difficult. And in this case, it looks like the prosecution just could not convince those jurors that he pulled the trigger, that he knew what he was doing, that he pulled the trigger, maybe aiming at her for a first degree murder, maybe not aiming at her for second degree murder. But clearly, the fact that they could not even get negligent murder, that's what that involuntary manslaughter is, that's negligence. They couldn't even prove that he was negligent means that we've just got this gun charge that's based on his prior felonies. Yeah, illegal possession of a firearm. What does that mean? And and he could see, serve a maximum of three years, but he's also getting credit for time served, so he could be out in less than a year or six months, maybe. He could be out at, at the day of sentencing, frankly, because yeah. he's been behind. He's already been in jail for more than 18 right. months. So he's already been convicted. When he was coming into this, he had already been convicted of seven felonies. And so that's what that felony possession of a firearm means. It means that someone who's been convicted of felonies, as he had seven times, who is in possession of a firearm. And what's important about this is that it means the jury knew, uh, the jury thinks that he knew that that was a gun, right? He says it was wrapped in a shirt. He, maybe he didn't know what it was, but they're saying he knew it was a gun, but clearly they think that it went off accidentally. Now, and as Andre was just saying, there is an ice warrant for him, so even if he were to try to walk out of the courtroom today, they would be right there to pick him up, because while we may be a sanctuary city, we have to respect warrants, not necessarily requests from ICE, but those actual official warrants from judges have to be respected. He will be turned over to, to the federal authorities. The defense team spent a lot of time on forensics, and one of the things that was really telling was they were able to bring in experts to say, this was a ricochet. This was not a point and shoot. This was, the gun went off, and in fact, they found the spot on the pier where the concrete was chipped, that bullet traveling then, I don't know how many yards, to hit the victim and kill her. But still, there's a loss of life here, and all we have is a possession charge. Well, I mean, the ricochet was the problem for the first degree murder, right? First degree murder means that you planned a murder and you just can't plan ricochets. And so that was generally thought to be sort of a long shot. But second degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, that's basically you're negligent, you're grossly negligent in a public place, pulling a trigger, even if it's something that ricochets. The fact that you pulled a trigger on a pier where there's other people means that you're being negligent. So what this jury verdict tells us is that they don't think that he pulled the trigger. And wow. that's why we didn't wow. get to any of those convictions. And I think Matt Gonzalez, the defense attorney, is correct when he says there will be a lot of speculation mm -hmm. over this and a lot of talk about it. Oh, certainly. I mean, I, we're waiting for the, the tweet from the president yeah, any second now. Yeah. Melissa Kane, thank you for that analysis. Mm -hmm.